and welcome to this review of my Wombat Calais keyboard. Well, Calais or Coleus, whatever. This was a donation from Wombat, I did an unboxing of it a while ago. I don't have that many low profile keyboard and switch reviews, even though they're getting more and more popular, so I accepted this one and the low free low profile one to pad it out a bit more, so to speak, even though I'm more of a high profile guy myself. This one immediately stuck out to me during the unboxing for its rather impressive RGB. I'm not normally super hot on that for my keyboards, as I already have my living room for that sort of thing, but on this it looked especially good. I'll save that for later, but I'm going to start off with some complaints. Now, the first thing I have to mention is the layout and form factor. It's basically a 75% keyboard, and among all the form factors, 75% has the greatest variance in key layout by far. In this case, they put the FN key in the bottom left here where the control key goes. And if you know anything about this channel, you probably know that control is a very important key. But instead, they stuck it here where it's a lot more inaccessible. And you know, trying to play shooter games without being able to jump and RTS games without being able to make command groups, let me tell you, it isn't much fun. So putting an FN key here is horrible and it's not possible to rebind this key. I've seen it on some other models as well, particularly laptop keyboards, but it's fucking horrendous what blundering dick nugget came up with this idea. I found myself overcompensating for it as well, knowing that it's a key further up than you expect it to be, I found myself pressing this one instead. So this thing gave me a pretty big headache while playing games. Now I could just end a review here and leave it at, it sucks, and frankly I didn't greatly enjoy my time using this keyboard, mostly because of this, but I did soldier on for a whole week, I mean it's not like it was the pocket type or something. The first version of this review was a lot more scathing as well, but gradually I kind of mellowed out a bit, so it's not as negative as it originally was. But that is a massive weakness I did want to start off with, because that is probably enough to deter a large amount of people from buying it. The keyboard does feature programmable keys, but only some of them are programmable, and that doesn't include the FN key, so you can't undo this massive mistake that they made. The keys you can program are these five keys here, the volume roller, and the function layer of the Q through P letter keys. You can program them with their software called Pouch, which I found to be... Okay, I needed the manual to use it and it looks rather jank while still taking up a pretty liberal 140 megabytes, so it's far from great, but it's not the worst I've ever used. Don't know if that's really a compliment or not. They appear to market the macro keys as emoji keys, which shows what they think you might want to do with them, and they even provide a few emoji keycaps with the keyboard. It's these rather gnarly looking yellow ones, although I already seem to have lost them, which goes to show why I think of the usefulness of emoji keycaps apparently. <laughs> Let's continue on with the switches, it comes with Gateron Low Profile, and you can get them in red or brown flavour, so you're limited to linears only, unfortunately. This one came with browns, and it's one of the least tactile, tactile switches I've ever used. This practically makes MX Browns feel tactile, it's unbelievable. Now, that's not really a function of the keyboard itself, obviously, but it's a shame they went for these switches, I think. They're okay in terms of smoothness, but they're not what I would have gone with personally. At 3mm travel, it's not that short travel for a low profile switch, but it's not as long as full travel either. And personally, I really would have liked if they had had an option with click bars, which would give a much better typing feel in my opinion. So maybe chalk switches or you know, something similar would have been better, or at least more versatile. But maybe they used these because of the MX keycap mounts, or because of the lighting or something. Overall, it's a matter of personal preference, of course, but I'm heavily underwhelmed by the switches, if I'm honest. The keyboard is hot swappable, so you can transplant switches in, I guess, but if you want chocks, you have to get your own keycaps because they're a different mount. These caps are only compatible with MX mount switches, and I'm not sure there actually are click bar MX mount low profile switches that use this pinout. I could be wrong though, let me know if I missed any. The keycaps themselves are also not that great. The shape looks like it's lifted straight off of an Apple IIc, which people may or may not like, and the pudding effect, where the top is black but the underside has been left semi-transparent, really helps with the RGB, 
but the print on the keycaps themselves is kind of blare. The font isn't really it for me, I don't like the symbols on the modifier keys, and especially the millions of little pictograms for all the secondary functions make the keyboard look super messy in my opinion, which is extra bad on a 75% keyboard where the layouts are already non-standard and more difficult to get into. It just looks like a bit of a wreck, I'd massively clean this up if I were them. There are just so many symbols all over the place that it's really confusing. I think during the unboxing I couldn't even find which button increases or decreases the RGB brightness because there were too many brightness buttons on the keyboard, believe it or not. At first I thought it was these two, makes sense right, but as it turns out it was on the arrow keys. Let's be honest though, they could have just as easily been these two here. And I'm not even sure what they do now, really. And hmm, PU and PD, let alone this key here, what well, I'm not even sure of what it does, or this one here, yuck. And that's not even mentioning the wombat on escape. As a general note to keyboard developers, if the symbols on your keyboard are not self-explanatory enough that people will need to look them up in the manual, you might as well not even put them on there because then the symbol hasn't served its purpose. It makes the keyboard look messy without it being helpful. I mean, what the shit even is this stuff here? Open the vortex? And this one, fire off a shooting star? Just get rid of it. I'd much rather have a classic clean looking keyboard then gaze at this fucking rebus puzzle all day long if I'm gonna have to look at the manual anyway to figure out what's what. It doesn't help of course that this keyboard is aimed at Apple users, which by the way would also explain why clearly no thought has been given to this product's usability during gaming. Now bizarrely they proudly boast of its Appleness on their product page and it includes a bunch of things like an Apple menu key, a Siri key and a bunch of other things Plus, it's set up with a Mac layout by default. Now, it's got a Mac layout indicator light on it, which probably means you can switch it to Windows, but I couldn't find among the symbols, nor anywhere in the manual, how to do this, and I couldn't find a physical switch on the keyboard for it either. Some keyboards have that, which means that I'm locked in this stupid Mac layout, and therefore these keycaps here are a lie. This isn't the Win key, it's actually Alt, and this Alt is the Win key, and on the other side, it's even worse. This this ALT key also isn't ALT, but it's also a WIND key, and this isn't CONTROL, but ALT. Anyway, where I was going with this is that they chose to put the legends for both layouts on the modifier keys, with the normal keys subtitled in micro-fucking-scopic font size, I might add, and again, I find that this makes the keyboard look overly busy and chaotic. At least have the decency to provide separate Mac and Windows keycaps or something. Instead, we get piss yellow emoji keycaps. I mean, I don't want to sound like a boomer, but do you get my point now? Where are this developer's priorities? There is a knob here at the top, it's a volume roller, and it's also programmable. At first I mistook it for a battery cover, but despite this very much AA sized round tube thing that runs at the top here, clearly lifted off of Apple keyboard designs, it doesn't accept batteries. A volume control is always nice to have, makes you question why they also put separate keys and symbols on here for volume up and down as well, but anyway, it works fine, it's okay, perhaps a bit stiff for my liking, you need to work it a fair bit to make big changes in the volume volume, but it's good enough I guess, still nice to have. There is an actual battery in the keyboard though, and it's wireless as well, like many smaller keyboards. To facilitate carrying, it even comes with a cream-coloured faux leather carrying bag with magnetic buttons in the flap, which is nice, I like this thing, although the styling doesn't really match that of the keyboard I think. Finally, to not end on a sour note, let's look at the RGB, because that's the one thing they did do properly, I can definitely say. This has got to be one of the most impressive backlights, barring the void keyboard, obviously, I have ever seen. It's pretty bright, very well dispersed, and patterned in such a way that it looks like it's got way more LEDs than just one under each key. It's quite mesmerizing, actually. I think whoever designed this definitely came through here. So, although I didn't really like my time using this keyboard all that much, maybe I can use it as a decoration in my living room or something. See, that fits pretty nicely among the rest, I think. And how much do you pay for all this? $145. Now, the top part is made out of aluminium and the bottom is plastic, and apparently this is now what this sort of keyboard costs nowadays, because many of its competitors in this segment cost at least this much. 
but still, I think this is a lot of money for what it is. I mean, it doesn't have any new technologies or any gadgets. It's just a half metal, small, hot swappable, low profile Apple keyboard with a bunch of deficiencies. I guess it's very specific niche. And if you want to fill that very specific niche, then this is an option that you have. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.